close to it for an hour to cause a slight problem, but I'm sleeping, living 24 7, 365, then you bump my ribs or somebody else, whoever's there, this. I want to see it in body that y'all have tested this cocktail, not just test it and see if a lot of the things that are happening to these people is caused by that cocktail. And the, um, the things that, for example, EPA stands for, um, strictly um, PAHs, um, is listed with a uh, group of compounds of an analytical result called semi volatile organic compounds. Very long list. The thing that we were focused on were um, a small group of that subset of that PAHs um, based on a result we got back to the um, they told us there might be something there. Um, if we were to get detections within that longer list of something that we weren't focusing on, we'd be interested in it. But unless we can relate it back to um, a known source of anything, and if it's still within this range of it could be caused by an interference, there's nothing to give us the indication that either it's actually there or that we have any potential source of anything like that. So when you're talking about the cocktail toxins of the, the things that EPA sample for and the things that George sample for, George sample for a very long list of things, a lot of things, like 150 compounds, and as Jim admitted, some of those things um, have never been reported or required to report um, on the CSX property. They were just included in the list of things that we sampled for. If you want to know uh, a list of all the things that could potentially be there, it's it'd be difficult because we really haven't reported that much in the level of detections. We do know, right? We do know uh, what actually was at seven now. We do know what actually is um, a problem at CSX and what actually was a problem at Atlanta Gaslight, what they continue at Manufacturing Gas Plant, what they continue to monitor. You know those things, but when you cast a wide net of all sorts of different um, uh, compounds in your samplings, and you come up with all these um, nuances interspersed here and there <coughs> of whether or not it was an actual detection when it probably wasn't, just because that's the nature of the <coughs> um, it, it doesn't actually indicate that there's a cocktail of toxins that's in the uh, what, we, what I think would be beneficial, and let me know if I'm wrong here, is um, as part of um, DPH's um, ongoing um, health consultation, um, and they're going to be reporting on the kind of things that um, are going on at CSX and um, taking a look at those results, is for them to put together um, a list of known um, contaminants that have been addressed um, at the kind of sites that we're talking about what those health effects might be. It's almost impossible to go backwards and say this health effect was caused by a, um, a specific compound um, when the, the direct correlation um, can't be made to um, an exposure, such as if, uh, if you had an, an accident, an environmental accident and release, that's one thing. But if it's, if it's this nebulous idea about whether or not it's um, in the air or in the environment, we can't can't go backwards and make that connection. Well, the reason why I'm asking that, okay, in a medical field, a person who, um, a normal person says to themselves, I can take aspirin or Tylenol. I can even take it again. It might not affect me. But if you take certain medications, I, one of my sisters had um, a, a real severe headache, and they gave her Imitrex. She had already been given a controversial jet drug, and it cost her to have a heart attack, and they had to revive her. So if you mix chemicals, the chemical by itself might be a problem, but if you throw these chemicals together, you don't know what damage or what new cancer it's going to throw in there that that particular person or that group of people, it, it can affect. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Exactly. So is that, is that something that <coughs> yeah, yeah. we're talking about is suggesting or additive effects, and especially chemicals that are in the same class. You know, you've got a couple different kinds of benzene. You can't 
can't, I mean, we don't evaluate them as two separate exposures. We do an additive exposure scenario. So to answer your question, I'd like to make sure that I get your question and I can email you. <coughs> Tell me exactly what you're asking for because we will provide that. Right? We will look, we can look at synergistic additive and there is also um, other kinds of effects when certain chemicals increase the effects of them all the time. And there's not a lot known about that <coughs> in the literature. It's something that is being asked more and more from communities that we do. And they're doing it more and more. It is it's really complex science. And we do, do we are doing that. And I think with this, these sites and with the data that we have, we can provide that. You know, and I'll just add to that, so from a toxicology standpoint, we, we, we didn't look at and consider mixtures of chemicals. But these chemicals that we're really most worried about here, the carcinogenic, polyaromatic, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, we're looking at the cancer effects there. So those levels that cause cancer effects, the one in a million cancer risk to one in 10,000 are so low compared to what would cause a some other kind of toxic effect other than cancer that we're we are, we are sure that we're that we would be protective for those non-cancer effects. Now, as far as evaluating um, mixtures of chemicals and whatnot, you know, toxicologists do that when they can. But a lot of times you'll mix together, you know, two or three different chemicals and see, yeah, this causes toxicity to the laboratory animal. Well, wh which one of those chemicals is causing it? The only way to really figure that out is to look at each of them individually. And then, and then, go, or maybe do different combinations or whatever. So there's some studies that you have been done. You can take like a simple but there's, aspirin, yeah. and if you take an aspirin a day, you're okay. But if you take a multiple bottle of aspirin a day, you're damaging your body. Yeah. So, well, and just to just yeah. to differentiate between that, you're talking about drug effects. Right. You're talking about taking something where you want to have an effect. Or being exposed and then to obviously, it. if you get too much of the wrong pair combinations, you can have ill effects. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I understand that. What, yeah. but, what, what we're talking about with, with environmental chemicals is a level below which we're sure there is no effect. So we're talking about a long way below any health effect. Right, right, right. right. And, let me just add on to what Kevin was saying. He has already said that there's a risk range for cancer, let's say for cancer. So the individual chemicals, we're looking at a one in a million increase in cancer risk is a health-based level. If you're above that, then you look at every single other chemical there to see if together your increased chance of cancer is above that range, which goes to one in 10,000. Okay, okay. The so the EPA's ideal standard, is it not zero? For TCE. And if you've got drinking water, you drink drinking water, water, isn't that the goal? No, the ideal standard right. is zero. zero. Right. There's no yeah, way to measure it. There's no way to measure it. That's what we just, that's what I was saying. But there was some in the drinking water, and I think what she's asked the same as what I was asking is you've got a chart to say, hey, TCE causes this and this, but when you mix it with a heavy or a tooling, I have found no information whatsoever right. that shows even what the small amounts. Under the NCL, what they cause. Right. Yeah. And, Put together. Right. And, and, and the reason is because it takes a lot of laboratory testing to figure out what one single chemical does. <coughs> and let's say there's let's say there's six compounds, just six. Okay. You've got twelve different combinations that you can have with those six things. So you have to test all those different combinations for interactions and things like that. So what Kevin was talking about is they look at class of chemicals. This benzene classes of chemicals with another class of chemicals, how would they interact? Do they cause similar effects? And that, once they're, again, if they get over that threshold, the next step would be to look to see if there are additive effects. For non-cancer effects, we would look to see if a chemical has the same target organ. Do, they, do these two chemicals both affect your liver? And then we'd consider that risk together. And those standards would be lower because those two things interact in your body and cause liver problems, okay? And I wanted to bring up something that you mentioned, it was a really good point, and you're talking about, you can take an aspirin a day and you're fine. You take a bottle of aspirin at a time, you're in trouble, right? So what that talks about is the dose, and that gets kind of into what we were talking about earlier about there are concentrations of these chemicals in the environment that they've calculated levels that a small amount that you take 
over a long period of time is not likely to have a significant health effect on you, one aspirin a day. But if there was higher concentrations out there, then that would be something that we would have to address, clean up, and investigate more because the dose to your body would be higher. Okay, so I just wanted to make that point. Yeah, that's just what I'm talking about. Right. But the, but the EPA has stated that their goal for TCE is zero. They have that there for a reason. It is for every carcinogenic compound, the MCLG or the MCL goal is zero. That's right. There's no instruments that detect the zero, though. Right. So what but they do is they set that MCL. We have some in some of our well water that people drink. Okay. But not everyone. We only have the room for 30 more minutes. Thank you. Actually, 20.